When a cell endocytoses extracellular cargo, newly formed endosomes travel along the maturation cascade to a variety of destinations. These early endosomes progressively mature into their late counterparts and during this process acquire a multivesicular organization through invagination of their limiting membranes into intraluminal vesicles, or ILVs. These late compartments, called multivesicular bodies, or MVBs, function as sorting platforms for discrimination between cargoes of diverse fates. Proteins trapped on ILVs are either delivered for degradation through fusion of the MVB with the lysosome, or released into extracellular space upon MVB fusion with the plasma membrane. These released vesicles, called exosomes, can be received by other cells and thus constitute a form of intercellular communication. But is sequestration of cargoes onto ILVs really a trap, or does an escape route exist? It has long been speculated that ILV membranes can fuse back to the limiting membrane of the MVB through a process termed retrofusion. Although retrofusion has until now never been directly observed, there are compelling clues to its existence. For example, retrofusion is thought to play an important role in exosome biology. Secreted exosomes can journey through extracellular space to encounter a recipient cell. These vesicles can contain many things, including growth factors, cytokines, RNA transcripts, microRNAs, or even prion proteins, such as beta amyloid and alpha-synuclein. Recent evidence suggests that because exosomes can transfer such materials between cells, they contribute to disease pathogenesis, for instance by promoting tumor metastasis or disseminating pathogenic proteins that drive neurodegeneration. But how is retrofusion involved in exosome biology? It is thought that when exosomes encounter a recipient cell, they can be endocytosed, facing two possibilities degradation or escape through retrofusion, the latter of which would allow them to release their content into the cytosome. For this reason, retrofusion is considered to be an important pathway for exosome uptake. Besides exosome biology, retrofusion may also contribute to antigen presentation by MHC class 2. Upon pathogen invasion, antigen-presenting cells ingest exogenous antigens and process this material in endocytic compartments to load MHC class II molecules with relevant peptides for display to the immune system. MHC class II is located mainly on ILV membranes of MVBs, where it comes in contact with its chaperone HLADM. This suggests that antigenic peptide loading likely occurs on ILVs which must subsequently fuse back to the limiting membrane in order to allow egress of MHC class II complexes to the plasma membrane for presentation, instead of otherwise being secreted in exosomes. While these and other leads point to retrofusion as a useful membrane pathway, the question of whether retrofusion actually takes place within the multivesicular body remains to be addressed. But how to detect such a dynamic process occurring on such a small physical scale? To tackle this problem, we developed a chemically tunable system allowing observation and quantification of retrofusion in real time. The details of this cell-based assay and its application can be found in our publication entitled Retrofusion Parallels Viral Infection and Coexists with Exosome Release by Perrin et al. Using our system, we have been able to establish the existence of retrofusion as part of the normal equilibrium of endolysosomal membranes and explore its relationship to degradation and exocytosis. Let's take a look at what happens inside an MVB. Formation of ILVs through budding and scission of the limiting membrane is orchestrated by the escort proteins and results in sequestration of cargos within the MVB lumen. So how can these ILVs retrofuse to escape their entrapment? We studied the process of retrofusion to find the conditions and molecules involved. MVBs are acidic organelles whose membranes are rich in lipids such as cholesterol and LBPA. We found that retrofusion is dependent on these fundamental characteristics for alterations in either pH or lipid composition of the MVB 
hinder the rate at which ILVs retrofuse. We also identified a class of proteins able to regulate retrofusion by demonstrating that ectopic expression of interferon-induced transmembrane proteins, or IFITMs, hampers constitutive retrofusion within the MVB. IFITM proteins are known to inhibit viral entry by blocking the fusion of endocytosed viruses with the limiting endosomal membranes. Since viral invasion also relies on the acidic environment and appropriate lipid repertoire within the MVB, we conclude that compelling parallels exist between viral fusion and retrofusion of ILVs. Furthermore, using our assay, we explored the relationship between exocytosis and retrofusion and determined that only part of the ILV population is retrofusion competent. Interestingly, the pool of ILVs inert to retrofusion encompasses the bulk of liberated exosomes, suggesting that these ILV pathways exist in equilibrium. To conclude, our findings demonstrate that there are three different pools of ILVs retrofusing ILVs, exosomes, and ILVs carrying cargo for degradation.